Kaur. My name is Thalina Balasuria. And my name is Wesley Peng. And today we're going to talk about a new fast and accurate algorithm for X-ray fluorescence sensors for the purpose of rapid blood diagnostics on homogeneous thin solid films of blood. And our co-authors are Nikhil Suresh, Ashiguru Jala, Amber Chow, Sharia Khanna, Mohammed Sahal, Dr. Eric Culberson, MD, Professor Robert Culberson, PhD, and our faculty advisor is Professor Nicole Erbo, PhD. So as an outline for our talk, we're going to talk about why we need fast and low volume blood diagnostics today. We will talk about what you need to analyze in whole blood to measure patient status. We'll talk about where we can use this new fast algorithm and how we saw the two key issues in whole blood testing today, which are that large volumes are needed currently and it's slow, often taking days or weeks for whole blood analysis. Now, since we have an emphasis on speed and efficiency, we are in the process of creating an app for not only x-ray fluorescence uh, analysis, but also analysis for other types of spectroscopies as well. So what is our motivation for doing such tests? Current blood tests require 10 to 12 milliliters and results take hours, days, or even weeks. This is detrimental to those that are chronically ill as well as infants. Our goals have the patient status test for electrolytes as well as heavy metal poisoning that can be used by doctors in ICU beds or in oil rigs. Overall, we need to analyze blood more accurately, more rapidly, and of smaller volumes. So what exactly are we analyzing and what is hemodrop? Hemodrop is a hyperhydrophilic coating that allows microliter sized blood droplets to quickly solidify via rapid vertical absorption into homogeneous thin solid films. These HTSFs are uniform, smooth, and planar as we see on the side. They are also, these allow us to have reproducible results of XRF measurements and accuracy better than 10%. Our built-in calibrations also allow us for reliable results. So our design for our collection substrate is as follows. We have a slide cladded with aluminum that is then perforated with seven holes. Four of the wells are for HTSS of the calibration solution, and three of the wells are for blood droplets that allow us to have reliable and accurate results through multiple analyzation of three bloods. We can see on the side two diagrams of our setup as well as the actual lab setup in our lab. So the method for testing that we're using is X-ray fluorescence or XRF. And basically what this is, is that an X-ray is sent at the homogeneous thin solid film. And this ejects out electrons from the outer shell of the atoms. And this emits a characteristic X-ray that we can use to identify the element's unique signature. Now the benefits of this is that it's relatively economical to use XRF compared to other elemental composition analysis methods and it gives a fast measurement within just a few minutes. However, some issues are that analysis on XRF machines currently are sometimes not always accurate for medical use, such as smart elements, which we'll talk about in the next slide. And if we're not using things like smart elements, it's really hard to manage XRF raw data for people like doctors or practitioners who don't use XRF raw data on a daily basis. So what are the issues currently with smart elements? Smart Elements is the most common data analyzing software for XRF devices throughout this world. However, this software provides inaccurate and imprecise blood composition results. We can see that zirconium is found present when using the software when it should not be since it did not account for background noise. There's also a bad polynomial background fit for the graph as we see on the graph in the side. Now our analysis procedure is a bit different. First, we select an element and inspect the peak of that element specifically based on its K-alpha emission, which is then linked to its channel number, which is on the X-axis for our sample spectra. Um, now the first thing that we do is we determine the width at half maximum of the peak to determine its resolution. So to do this, first we take the peak, such as the peak in figure one, and we look at the maximum value where my cursor is, and we go down to the left and to the right of the peak until we hit half of the maximum value. And so you can see these two black bars represent the width at half maximum for the peak in figure one. And then next we determine the area under the peak by doing an aggregation of the pounce for the whole peak width. 
So we start at the bottom, at the start of the peak here, up till the end of the peak, and we do an aggregation of all those counts. And then finally, we subtract the background. And how we do this is we go from the beginning of the peak to the end of the peak, uh, and we connect it with a line, and anything below that line is subtracted. So that is this red area that you see here in the figure one. Now to implement this in the analysis of our app, we have to put the data into a format called CSV or comma separated values. And you can see a simplified form of that here on the right side. So um, we can see that the rightmost column here is the, uh, the y-axis values from the graph earlier, which is the counts of each element for each energy level. And the second column here are the x-axis values or the channel numbers that are relative to the energy. So we can see here that we can find the maximum half max values and the beginning of the peak and the end of the peak from uh, this raw data. And once the computer or application has all this information, it'll be able to run a mathematical algorithm, which will then be basically the same algorithm we showed you earlier with the graph. However, the app will be able to do it with raw data. Now, as a summary of the pathway that the data will take during our whole project, Firstly, the data will start at the XRF gun where the measurement will be taken. And from there, it'll be sent to a cloud storage area or a cloud server on the internet. So from the internet, we will be able to download the file and transfer it into a CSV text format, either onto a PC or a mobile application. And once the file is in the application, we'll be able to run the app and we'll be able to run the algorithm so that we can produce data and results that can be sent to doctors, practitioners, or even hospital systems. Finally, for implementing our algorithm, we'll have two different methods. The first method will be heavy metal identification, where we identify the different heavy metals as seen on the screen for metal poisoning. And we give the relative composition of each of these heavy metals. And we will also have a whole blood test method, where we find the composition of several very important electrolytes and also other elements like iron. And this can be used to identify hyponatremia, hypernatremia, iron deficiency, anemia, calcium deficiency, and many other ailments. Um, now, this video is just a demo of the work that we've done and the progress that we have on our apps so far. So it's a work in progress. So first, you can see the title screen. And when you click Start, you'll go to a page with patient information where you can fill out the patient information. And then when you're done, then you go to the next slide, which uh, has a place where you can import the files or the CSV files for your patient's data. So you can import patient data from the files app on your phone. And then when you analyze the data, it will show the XRF spectra for that file. It will show the composition of the different elements for that specific patient, and it will give their name and a title. Okay, so what are our benefits to implementing? By implementing this algorithm, we can understand and quantify data in less than three minutes, flag discrepancies in analysis, and cut down time on blood collection in less than 20 minutes. We are able to have the gold standard of testing blood and will allow for fast action in hospital settings, ERs, or field hospitals and refugee camps. Thank you for listening to our presentation.